to to grab people's attention and the dragons well supported as you'd expect there they're certainly facing a challenge here this afternoon against the warriors outfit that was very impressive in their opening match last week 10-4 victors over the roosters and the dragons without their marquee player and captain sam bremner this afternoon but leading out this warriors outfit laura mariu the 5'8 and captain one of the world's most credentialed players she was tremendous in combination with this player last week georgia hale as i welcome joe barrett g'day joe hey matt how are you going great going Excellent. great it's very warm here and i'm interested in how the warriors in particular will handle that Phil Gould here with me as well. Good afternoon, Gus. Hello, mate. I'm looking forward to seeing Honey Heramay play at fullback as well. I think she was a little bit lace, wasted in the centres last week. Didn't see a lot of ball. I know they've lost their number one fullback, but this girl is a world-renowned athlete across a couple of codes. And at fullback, she could do a lot of damage for the Dragons today. She's played in three World Cups for the New Zealand team, also representing New Zealand in rugby union. And that is the case as well uh, with Juanita Schwalger, the number eight, who was also an Australian rugby union representative. So there's, uh, there's certainly some crossover between the sports here in the women's competition, but no question about the calibre of athlete we see this afternoon. It's the Warriors to start play here, and the Dragons have to win this to remain a chance to go through to the grand final, which we'll see here at ANZ in a fortnight's time. First run by Talisha Quinn, who missed last week's opening match for the Dragons because of injury. And now it's with Horn. They'll run back near the 30 metre line. Crystal Rota, very talented number nine for the Warriors. The chief tackler on that occasion. They come to the left hand side. And Wheeler in 14, given a promotion to the starting lineup. Member of the New South Wales women's origin side, Holly Wheeler. And now Hannah Southwell. Starting the match in the centres this afternoon. Here's Schwalga. Great clash of, uh, of two very well credentialed forward packs here this afternoon as well. To the Warriors forwards, they were rampant last week. And a mistake here from Schwalga. The Warriors with a, a chance here on the halfway line. Had a very warm day in Sydney in the mid 30s in some sections out west. and. These Warriors girls who came over from New Zealand last week to play on a cold, wet day over at Allianz Stadium now find a little bit of heat here at the Homebush Stadium this afternoon. So, very different weather conditions to what they've been experiencing. It was 36 outside the ground here about 90 minutes ago. I've been at Leichhardt Oval most of the afternoon watching the lower grades and very hot going over there. Leotua, Angelina Leotua playing the ball back now for Hale. And Tawasa Power Rysa into the starting lineup at lock forward for the Warriors. Away from Mariu. And they'll get a penalty here, this New Zealand side. They were too quick away, the Dragons' defence. Now he's Smalley, who was immense last week in the the opening game of the competition, played just about the full duration and was fantastic for the Warriors. Here's a short pass away now, Leia Tua. Stopped within a couple of the line. The Dragons, an early examination of their defense here. Tamarua. A couple out from the line. Ball swept away to the right-hand side through Hale and Mariu. And now Nichols, oh, he's an intercept. And they're flashing up the field. It's Tungai flying away. And there's no one anywhere near her. It's going to be a full length of the field effort. And the Dragons, against the run of play, they pluck one out of the sky and Tungai races away to score. When you look at that runaway try and I... I'm it's going to look like I'm biased because the Dragons just scored, but earlier I, I was considering how much the Warriors have had to travel. Fitness could be a factor for them. 
And with Honey hearing me at the back, knowing a lot of the Warriors players, I think she'll be a key in their defence and organising them. I'm going to tip the Dragons. I know they've scored early, but I thought of it earlier and I'm going to stick with it. Well, here's a perfect start for the Dragons. Ruan Sims on the sideline. Certainly was a great start there. A, a beautiful read by Shakia Tungai out on the wing. She was, they were stripped for numbers. As we can see here, Nichols just takes it to the line and looks to pass it to that big second rower they had running out there. But Shaq just got in front of the ball and pinned her ears back. I played with her in country this year at Nationals and she was a try-scoring demon for New South Wales country this year. And she started the Dragons off beautifully here this afternoon at ANZ Stadium. Well, no one made any ground on her. Well, Albeit she got the ball heading in the opposite direction and got a good lead on them. But you can see that coming as the ball drifted across the field. Happy Nichols had a decision to make. And she decided to throw the pass and Tongai picked it off. Kick successful. Good start to Georgia Lawara 6-0. The Dragons only managed the one try last week against the Broncos up at Suncorp Stadium and it's taken them four minutes to equal their attacking efforts here. A 6-0 lead. And it was an important intercept too by Tungai because they certainly had numbers on that right-hand side of the field, the Warriors. It was a try either way. Hmm. The fullback Nichols took a gamble. Tongai took a gamble and she came up a winner with a long-range try. Now, it's Alicia Quinn, one of the star-studded back row for the Dragons. Kezi Apps, her fellow second row, and Annette Brand of the lock forward. All internationals, very, very good players. Talisha's been really keen to get back out. Yeah. As I said, missed the opening match last week. And here's another opportunity. It's Hiramie. One of the absolute world stars, and she's going to score a long-range try. Wow. The Dragons, they're on fire early. Yeah, well, she just showed her class here. Honey Hirami. Looming into the play out wide, found some space. Still had one to beat with one in support, but watch the footwork here she puts on. Getting the ball out wide off a good offload. Gets into the backfield, one to Beaver. Look at the stride on this girl. Beats her opponent comfortably and just stretches away with a big smile on her face. She'll enjoy the freedom of playing fullback today. Alana. I think that's the key for the Dragons today, Gus, is just finding that space on their edges. If they can keep the ball alive, the, the Warriors' very dominant forward pack, they're going to just play them out of the game. And we see Honey here running. So they've done exactly that. So they're certainly playing to their strengths. It is quite warm down here. Uh, it's about 30 degrees still. We've got 30 kilometre winds favouring the Dragons at this point. So tough conditions. It's, it is warm, but this is the way to play for the Dragons. Keep tiring out that forward pack and running around them. 37 years of age, honey, here of me, but a wonderful player, very much the marquee here at St. George Illawarra. And while they've lost, Sam Bremner, having here of me back at fullback, has been a great replacement. They lead 12 0. after not even seven minutes of the game yet. Incredible start. Well, their performance last week, particularly in the first half against the Broncos, was, was very good. They ran out of puff a little bit in the second half, but this is dynamic here. 
And the Warriors, after attacking down on the Dragons' goal line, they were snuffed out by an intercept and haven't touched the ball since. What are the changes? I, I know she's named it at second row. Talisha Quinn's known as a back row for the Gillaroos. The last three hit-ups she's taken as essentially a prop. And um, she seems quite comfortable there. She's not afraid of taking on the line. And she's really getting them a lot of go forward at that first kickoff run. Four tackles gone here. Dragons through Schwolga with a strong run. Picks up 12 metres. Last tackle now. Comes away to Davis, 18 years of age, and throws a lovely pass away. Surges down the right-hand side. She's taken in a great covering tackle by Hale. And a change over here for the Warriors. She does a lovely ball, Joe. What a what a talented young player. Yeah, and that's um that's gonna be really hard for the left side of the Warriors to defend because Jess Surges in open space. She's gonna be match honey here me for speed on the other side. Now that's the girl that got knocked out last week, isn't it? Surges, yeah, just yeah, Surges. Jessica. Yeah, a little bump, a little bump, yeah. A little bump, crikey. <laughs> I'd still be asleep. Well, she's one half of the Dragons glamour couple, Gus. Yes, I saw her and Zach in a coffee shop earlier in the season talking to a club that wasn't the Dragons before she was signed up by the Dragons. Well, they were talking to Zach or...? No, they were talking to Jessica. I thought oh. they must have been talking to Zach, but they were talking to Jessica. Now, here's Serena Clark trying to find a way down the right-hand edge. But she signed with the Dragons. Yeah, they kept it, and just as well. You two could advise Women's Day. You've got all the, you've got all the mail, Gus. Uh, sneak around. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing he doesn't know, Joe. Not much that happens in Sydney, I don't know. <laughs> Alana. Yeah, Gus was uh, just mentioning Jess Surgis, who had that great run on the right edge. It's actually her 21st birthday today, so she's lightning out there on that right edge, but I, I'm assured that she's going to have a massive game today. No, oh, there's happy birthday, Jess. Gus will be there at the party later on tonight. He'd know where it is. She's only been playing for a couple of years, too. Well, that's a questionable ball. It's allowed to go. The Warriors here lay it to her. Shove, look at that defence by St George Illawarra. Good, strong stuff. She's been shoved back though. Here's Hale. Away to Vayanu. She'll get there. She should score. Has she, has she got the ball down? Held up. Brilliant defence. Wow. This will be fast. That's that Sergis underneath that. Yeah. yeah. What a way to spend your 21st birthday. Well, it's very Good brave job. after the knock she got last week to go in so hard. Now, Mariu on the last. She'll send a kick over. She wants to get over the top. It's been put down and touched by the Dragons. It's six to go. Serena Clark is dumped down. That was a very good kick there by Mariu, trying to get it over the top of uh, Tungai. And they've been able to get another set of six here off the back of that. Rotor in the dummy half. Can the Warriors get on the board? They've looked likely whenever they had the ball down here. Play now by Smalley. Sent away to Hale. Inside pass, Mardiu runs at them. She's a metre out from the line and right under the black dot. Away now to Hale in the defence. It's good again on the line. Sergis. Oh, she's been immense with some, some great tackles so far. Mariu, that's charged down. No, oh, the Dragons, there's nothing they can't do at the moment. And a great run upfield as well by Holly Wheeler. Rakea Horn plays at 10 short of the halfway line. Now we see Kezi Atz, who's captain today. Taking the, the captaincy with Sam Bremner unavailable with a broken toe suffered last week. So he's been getting around here in a moon boot. Now here's McGregor, who ran behind Wheeler there, put a kick through the referee right there and sees it in the end. Be blatant one that. 
Interested to see how Serena Clark goes out in the right centre for the Warriors. She's formerly known as Serena Fisso and was the fullback for the Warriors. Oh, sorry, Kiwi Ferns for a number of years. So the battle between her and Hiromi will be one to watch out there this afternoon. And the first opportunity she got, she broke the line. Yes, and there's a good combination there too with Hiromi and Racine McGregor, the halfback. Both New Zealand internationals. Oh, lovely kick. Nichols chips and chases and regathers. All the skills on show so far. Happy Nichols. She's been held down there. Oh, and there we go. We've got a sin binning. Yeah, well, she's definitely holding down. Lovely little play there by the fullback, Happy Nichols. Yes, it's Keely Davis off for a stint in the sin bin. Professional foul was the, the ruling. Another penalty. They're really applying some pressure against the Dragons' goal line now. The Warriors have had a lot of ball down here, but yet to yield a try. Mardiu away to Clark. Gives a short pass away. This might be the one. Oh, they've got around the ball again. Wheeler was there, but the Warriors have gone over. And we're going to consult with the bunker to see whether the ball has touched the deck. Now, let's have a look here. Vailia, oh, whoa. No try. Yeah, that's that's been lost. Elise Vailia has lost position, lost position over the line. The ball has gone from her left hand, loses position. In order to regain position, she needs to regroup the ball. We have a decision. Yeah. There's the decision. Well, they've got over the line again, the Warriors, but it's twice now they've gone over and haven't been able to, to get the ball down and uh, score some points. Let's go to Rouen. Yeah, great work, great scramble defence there by the Dragons. In attack, they have just been on fire, and then in defence, they have been working their butts off for each other. They've been getting to everything. Holly Wheeler doing a fantastic job there to try and hold up that big second rower over the line. And then we see Keely Davis goes in the bin for 10 minutes. That is actual 10 minutes, even though the halves are only 30 minutes. So that is going to be very tough for the Dragons to defend, but they look like they're in a mood this afternoon. Yeah, that's a really good point, Rowan. It's a long chunk of the game, isn't it, with 30-minute halves? And the Dragons are showing some, some real tenacity here at the moment. They lead 12 0, and their defence has denied the Warriors twice. Now, Sergis with a strong run. A shift here out to the left hand side. Holly Wheel have been very strong early in this match, Joe. Absolutely. I think um, Holly's doing a fantastic job out there. When she debuted for New South Wales, Coming off the bench, she had real impact, but given the chance to run on, she's really having a go. Oh, the penalty count. 5-1 in favour of the Warriors as well. And it's still the Dragons with a 12-0 lead. Now, Tina Clark, 16. Thrown into the match here after 14 minutes of play. McGregor went behind Apps. Hiromi. There's a touch of class about it. Isn't there? You can see whenever she's in possession of the ball, such a classy athlete moves beautifully. McGregor gives it away. And now Annette Brander within 22 metres of the Warriors line. Here's the fifth and last. McGregor rolls a kick. Down towards the line, Happy Nichols, the reigning New Zealand Women's Player of the Year there to retrieve it, but Stevens with a good kick chase. Knocks her over six metres out from her own line. Now Serena. Oh, pardon me, that's Laura Mardiou. Oh. 
Now Brander up there with Kezi App. Some strong physical defense there by St. George Illawarra. Here's Clark. The Dragons pack. They're dominating at the moment. Away to Hale. Lea Tua gets a pass back. Hale promoting the ball away. And over the halfway they go. It's Vayanu playing it. Uh, a kick coming here. A oh, strange old kick, that one. It didn't go anywhere. Changes made by St. And now Holly Wheeler, the Newcastle product. Up within nine metres of the halfway line. Laura Mariu. The tackler, she's made another one here. Back-to-back -back efforts from the number six and captain. Here's Kezi Apps, one of the stars of the Australian women's game. Within 31 metres of the Warriors line, on tackle number five, it's McGregor, who slams one down towards the end goal. It's uh, it's too deep. I don't think that was the kick that she wanted. She's probably in two minds there, whether to put it high or just dink a little one into the corner, and in the end she gave it a belt and ended up way up the back. Now, yesterday, the Broncos made it two from two, beating the Roosters. That was at Allianz yesterday afternoon. 14 points to four, the full-time score there. If you'd like to have a look at all the highlights from that game, you can do so at the website, widewatersports.com.au. Switch here from Mariu to Hale. If they can jag a try here, the Warriors, you just get a feeling that they might have some points in them. Well, the game's really evened out at the moment. That early flurry by the Dragons as the fizz has gone out of them a little bit. And the Warriors have shown they've got skill. Here's a strong charge to Asa Power Ricer. She was knocked back in some stern defence there, but stayed alive with it. Now Mariu, she'll send a high kick up. It's going to bounce in the field of play, but takes a kick towards the dead ball line and over it. Yeah, good to see Annette Brenda out there in the lock for the Dragon. She actually got players player at the State of Origin side, and um, you don't hear a lot about her. She's very humble, very quite achiever, but if you keep an eye on her today, any of the tough tackles, she'll be around it. She has a lot of work in the middle, and up against the Warriors, you know there's going to be an arm wrestle in the middle of the paddock and she'll be there every opportunity she gets. Kezi Apps is down with the trainer here at the moment. Her ankle attended to. Now Kezi played on the left last week. She was responsible for several good offloads, but playing on the right today, she's obviously very versatile. Jess Sergis slammed into the ground. Edwards in 21. And Leia Tua, the other defender. Here's Apps. Oh, she's met with a very good tackle. Tuasa Power Rysa. This is nice work by Annika Stevens. From Western Australia. The number nine for the Dragons was recruited from the competition over there. And Hiromi plays it. And Stevens is happy just to knock it over the sideline at 12 nil. She's happy to try and wind the clock down as much as possible. Now, like I said last week, they were, they were terrific in the first half, even though the score ran against them, but they did tire badly in the second half. So maybe the, the tactics of putting the ball out of play and getting a rest are, are intentional. Of course, the first of two games Coming your way here on Channel 9 today, we've got the Women's Premiership now, and then tonight, what a game. Two age-old rivals head-to-head, -head, the Rabbitohs against the Dragons. And we'll be with you from 7 o'clock here on 9. Let's go to Alana for a comment. 
Yeah, I don't know if that's the smartest option from the Dragons at the moment. Down here on ground level, uh, the Warriors girls look much more tired than the Dragons. I think their best efforts will be just be to keep the ball in play and keep running them around because they're doing that. And when they are tiring them out, that's when they've been playing their best football. Nungor was the runner that time, playing it. And now a hit up by Smalley playing it down the short side. They'll come here. Serena Clark tries some fancy footwork, but it's tackled really well there. That's Hannah Southwell. Ball sent over to Mardiou. Now to Hale. Stabs a kick in, but it's straight down to Hiromi. And Edwards rushes up. One on one steal, but she lost it. Almost a really important play there by Edwards. Couldn't quite finish it off by hanging onto the ball. She went in hard, didn't she? Got a bit of an elbow on the chin for a trouble, and she kept her eyes on the prize there. Bang, she gets belted, but keeps her hands at the ball and strips it away from Honey Hiramie. I don't know if she deliberately tried to take that or she just went in and tried to avoid the well-known palm that Hiramie does and hit it hard and the ball came out. Well, it's been ruled that she's knocked on. I, I can never work out if I'm defending how I knock it on. I just used to have trouble working out how to defend Hiramie in general. I generally left it to someone else. <laughs> Smart move. So the Dragons, they're dominating here at the moment. That penalty will help them get up near the halfway line. We haven't seen, really seen them down this end of the field at all. Their two tries have been long range from their own end of the field. One, an intercept, and the other one, Honey Hiramie, showing her class out wide. They weren't very adventurous with that kick for touch either. So they start a set of six, 40 metres out from their own line. That's Holly Wheeler with the restart. Now for Tina Clark. Another try here before half time, and this Dragon side are really in the box seat to go on with it. A reminder they have to win here to stay alive and be a chance to go through to the grand final. A victory for the Warriors would lock in the Brisbane Warriors grand final in a couple of weeks, so there is a lot riding on the outcome of this match. Murphy, the 18. Away from McGregor. Fights a long one. Clark was caught out of position here, and Southwell can't get to the line. Good desperate defences. We see Keely Davis re enter the game. We've got 13 on 13, and the Dragons have done well despite being down a player for that period. Well, that was a brilliant pass. Really found the mark. And should have been converted into a try. But good covering defence there from the Warriors girls. 13, 13. Nichols tackled by Davis, who actually only turned 18 last week. Keely Davis. Can we just ask the girls on the sideline what's the temperature like down there at the moment? Is it cooled yeah. off any? Yeah, it's still very warm down here. It's about 30 degrees at the moment, and that wind is actually gusting about 30 to 35 kilometres an hour. So it is quite tricky conditions. Well, the Warriors have had very little quality possession. Certainly the heat is conspiring against them in terms of having fuel in the tank for a comeback here as Hale sends a kick downfield. And Hiromi will get it on her own 30-metre line. And Edwards once again... Very physical in defence. Vayonu there as well to help with the defence. Here's a good run. It's Horn for the Dragons. Has shown clean pair of heels so far whenever she's been given an opportunity. And now Sergis. All quality, this girl. Oh, second grab there from Louisa Nungor. And a penalty goes the way of the Dragons. Great opportunity for more points before the half-time break. Yeah, it's an important period for both teams, isn't it? The Dragons can really set up the victory here with some points, and the Warriors have got to defend it to keep themselves in touch.
So Haran playing it. The 19. So all the bench players out there now for St George Illawarra. 30 minute halves in the women's competition. So just over five minutes until the break. Davis gives a pass away to Haran who has another go at them. Five out from the Warriors line. It's New Zealand side desperate here to hold them out once again. Howard in 17. Hiromi wrapping around the back. Oh, look at her. They've only just been able to cling on and deny her a chance for a second try. Seven metres short. Kezi Apps now with some good footwork. She's only a metre from another four points. Play to Davis. No, she's made a mistake in the play. The ball and the Warriors have escaped. Well, there's a nice little trick shot there from the Dragons. A switch of play and a bit of a run around and... Then a decoy runner to set Heremy on the loose. I think all these girls are struggling down there. Certainly the Warriors girls. This is much warmer weather than they've been used to in recent times. They played here last week in the drizzling rain, 15 degrees. And things have been pretty cool in New Zealand as well. Heremy, she's a handful. Once she gets loose, big, tall, athletic girl. You can see her class. In the 2013 World Cup, Honey was running a mark every game. She was scoring lots of tries, and the media dubbed her Honey Bill. So that's what she went with. And um, thoroughly deserved if you watch the way she plays, too. Now, Serena Clark, she'd be one of these Warriors players that could get them back into this. A penalty here for some offside defence. So the Warriors with less than four minutes until the break. I wonder if they can manufacture something. They're going to take the tap instead of a kick. Vailia. Alice Vailia playing it to Crystal Rota. Laura Mardiou, the 5'8", going to the line and, and looking for an option, but there was none there for her. Three, three. Here's a good opportunity. Rota, very dynamic out of dummy half. Tackled by Wheeler. They come to the left-hand side now. Very flat pass there from Hale. On the 30 now, the Warriors trying desperately for something before the break. Hale again sends a pass away. Oh, that one is called forward. And it was, it was marginal. And if it wasn't called forward... The Warriors are off again. That's the third opportunity they've had to score that's gone begging. Yeah, and of about the last five passes, this was the least forward. There were some forward passes before this one, but I thought that one was pretty flat. But fair enough. Anyway, it's a setback for the Warriors. Two and a half minutes before the break. They don't want to concede another try. 12 points is not insurmountable. 18 could be stretching the friendship a little. Already got some Rabideau fans in here tonight and some Dragons fans, of course. Getting ready for the big semi-final. They've had a hell of a week, the Rabbitohs, haven't they? Crikey. It'd be nice to talk about the footy tonight, won't it? Here's Kezi Apps now. Such a strong runner of the ball. The bigger product, Kezi Apps, now surges. How impressive is Jess Surges? Tackled on the halfway line and a penalty. They were crowding her in the play of the ball. It's a little bit of a repeat of what happened earlier. Down this right side of the Dragons' attack, they're catching the markers offside and they're scooting one out and getting heaps of ground and then getting a penalty. So it's easy metres for the Dragons and the Warriors need a little bit more discipline there, I think. Now Haran with a run to within 40 metres of the Warriors line. Let's go to Ruan. Last time we saw the Dragons down here in their attacking good ball position, there was some real space around the goalpost. Their middle forwards for the Warriors are looking very, very tired and they're looking vulnerable there if the Dragons can get it there. Let's see if they will. Here's Davis with some good speed. A real live wire, Keely Davis. 14 metres short. 
of the Warriors line. It comes away now for Harun. Very willing in her involvement so far. We've got a minute left until half time. The Warriors, they've got to knock them back here. That's taken a, a deflection off Clark. It was allowed to continue. That's a forward pass in the end. We probably shouldn't have got to that. It, it came off Clark and in a forward direction, but that one certainly forward. So the Warriors have just clung on here. Well, I feel like the Dragons are going better, and that sounds obvious with the 12-0 scoreline. But they scored those two tries very early from long range. And in the last seven or eight minutes of this first half, I think they're getting a lot the better of the Warriors players late in this period. And that should accentuate when we turn around for the second half. It's going to be very hard for the Warriors to run down this lead. Well, we're certainly happy to see the half-time break at this rate. And they've lost the ball here. They'll be saved by the siren, though. It is half time. It's the Dragons with a very good performance here. We're on tonight. Here's the arena, Papa Lee. Taking the first run for the Warriors. We know they're a quality outfit, very capable of scoring points. But they have it all ahead of them just at the moment. Here's Smalley with an excellent charge up the middle of the field. Running up to the halfway line. Playing it here to Crystal Rota, away to Georgia Hale, who shows and then delivers a the ball on the outside. The defence led by Kezi Apps there. Makes the tackle. Now Vayanu, held by Davis and Sergis and Howard. 25 short of the line. Leia Tua. And on the last tackle, in fact, we'll have, they've struggled to communicate there. And it's going to be a turnover. The Dragons with it on their own 20. Well, they obviously lost count. They were all lined out deep to the right. and No one was calling for a kick, so no one knew it was fifth tackle. Terrific game so far, Rakia Horn. Inside ball from McGregor, and then away to Talisha Quinn. In fact, sorry, it's Holly Wheeler on the side of the field now. And now a charge by Tina Clark. Just short of the halfway when her runs in, run ends on tackle four. Let's go to Alana for a comment on the touchline. Oh, just a quick comment on the coaches from half time. The Warriors coach just wanted them to reproduce what they were doing last last week. They just he just wants them to get back into the ground and treat it like a grand final. And the Dragons coach was very happy, wants them to keep up the energy and just remember that they've still got 30 minutes of tough football out there. Yes, some new players like Happy Nichols out there. So, Dangerous for the Warriors. Now Hale skipping across them. Ran behind a player again, but the referee was all right. She was deep enough. No, he wasn't. He says that's an obstruction. Beautiful day in Sydney, albeit a little warm for this time of year, but should be a big crowd here for the, the Dragons and Rabbitohs later. Thirty-seven premierships between them, Gus, the Rabbitohs and the Dragons. Yeah, they're two of the big clubs, aren't they? I would like to think you'd get 65, 70,000 to a game like this tonight. Just looking at the early comers too, there's people all over the stadium, up in the high parts and out in the back parts. So mm. you'd hope the ticket sales have stretched that far. Now here's Apps with a, a good charge. Gets to within 12 metres of the line. Pass comes away to Brander, who straightens off the left leg. 
Held there by Papali in. Crystal Rotor, eight metres out. Davis gives the ball to Howard. Oh, strong shot. Great defence. Read it. Read it like a book. McGregor should put a kick up across the field. Gets as far as Southwell, who gave it now to Tungai, chipping over the top. Good hands by Nichols, and she'll get back into the field of play. Here's Serena Clark. Tries to sell a dummy, and she was able to get through the market defence. Picks up 11 metres. Now Rota. And now... Valia. The Warriors forwards, they dominated the Roosters last week, but they have had nowhere near that impact so far in this match. Yeah, all different conditions, and the Roosters again yesterday didn't really come up, did they? Now that's come off a Warrior leg, but Howard's there to get it back for the Dragons. The Broncos 14-4 winners over the Roosters again yesterday, who just looked to be struggling to to manufacture any worthwhile attack. Don't look to have many points in them. Now Howard, short side. Davis kicks it through. The Warriors cover. Rakeo Horn was bearing down on that ball. With a little kick in behind the line. Yes, there is that result from yesterday. Confirming what Gus told us. The Broncos, two from two. Tough game to footy, that one as well, 14-4. Yeah, they've got some class players, the Broncos. Mm. Having seen all four teams now for a couple of weeks, they look the pick of them, don't they? Yeah. And Ali Brigginshaw, wonderful. And Braley, the dummy half. Some real talent. Now Papali'i goes over the halfway line. Taken by Davis, who's playing in the, the dummy half role now. Kezi Apps there as well in defence. Here's the kick by Hale. Finds the ground. Picked up by Tungai. Shack, they call up. Well, she scored the first try of the night. A 90 metre intercept. She showed good pace too. Pretty handy goal kicker as well. Davis for McGregor, for Howard, and for Kezi Apps. A couple from the halfway line, which he was tackled by Georgia Hale. Now McGregor, now for Howard. Melanie Howard with the headgear. Some good footwork there. Plays it on the 40 metre line. Now Hiromi, look at that for wonderful, evasive footwork. 37 years old, getting better. McGregor, away for Howard now, chips over the top, trying to set up a chase, the bounce, it's a super bounce for the Dragons, and Horn will score a much deserved try. Well that kick was deliberately placed, it's a brilliant kick, and shows really good vision to be aware where the opposition winger was, gone back before tackle five. She'll sum this up beautifully and kicks it right in the middle. Hoping for the bounce, obviously. But beautifully attacked there. Great try to the Dragons. Ryan Sims. So you spoke about uh, that deft little kick there that was put in by Mel Howard. She is a real talent. She's been playing some really great football for New South Newcastle uh, CRL in the women's competition here. And a great chase there by Rakia Horn. But Mel Howard, she noticed that the winger had actually dropped back thinking that it was going to be a deep kick. So she just popped one over the top. And Rakia Horn, wonderful talent. She actually made her debut for the Gillaroos Nines at the start of the year. And she was phenomenal then. And she's also a product of the South Coast. So all of the fans here in their Dragons colours will be cheering for their local girl. Yeah, she's been phenomenal today, Ruan. Yep. A beautifully placed kick. That, that, that showed real real class, that. Just to be able to sum up where the opposition winger was, put it right in the path of her own winger. And another good kick. It's 18-0.
three from three for her tonight. And the Dragons lead at 18 points to nil. Changes made by both sides. The Warriors, number 20 is on the field. Raquel Anderson, and number 16, Amber Carney. And for St. George and the Warren, number nine. Oh, the Dragons have really dominated our outsiders here. They lost Sam Bremner because of a broken toe. One of the game's premier players, but they've got an 18-0 lead here. Make sure we're behind. I was talking to Sammy before the game, and, you know, she's got such a great attitude. She's had a bad luck with injury since the World Cup. Stay behind. And I've never seen a losing player so happy after last week, but the Dragons girls have gelled so well. They've got a great attitude. They're the team with the least amount of rep players and marquee players in the competition, but nobody's told them that by the way they're turning up at the moment. Well, Holly Wheeler has had a, a great impact here too. Brilliant athlete, so big and strong. Tongue guy. You're right about it being a handy goal kicker, Gus. That was a great shot at goal. Well, every kick she's kicked has got beautiful trajectory and has gone straight over the black dot. Yeah. Where she aims it, that's where it goes. I wonder if she can play golf. Well, she looks like she could do anything. She's quite the athlete. Now Stevens for Howard and for Kezi Apps. This performance by the Dragons really makes the Broncos' form look strong, doesn't it? Well, Kezi's copped the knock there. She's been rattled by that as Howard. It's a high kick up. Lovely kick. Oh, bad luck with the bounce. That's very unfortunate. It's rolled over the dead ball line. Well, if the Warriors want to get back into it, they, they need to do something soon. 30-minute halves in the NRL women's competition. So we're down to 20 minutes left in the match. Papali'i playing it. And now Tamarua. Through to Georgia Hale, who'll take on the line herself. But look at the numbers there for St. Georgia Lawara. They're not letting the Warriors take a trick here just at the moment. Mario for Nung Or, a metre out from the halfway line. Stopped by Holly Wheeler. Now, Serena Clark. Oh, it's Wheeler again. Wheeler and Quinn to stand out dragons away now they go to the left hand side and Carney floats a pass away to Edwards and another big tackle Kezi Apps was down in the horn just a second ago and there she is right across the field to make a big tackle now Hale kicks one that bounces backwards if you don't mind Rogers got it floats it over the top it's with Hilda Mario now it's with Serena Clark She'll send a high kick up. It bounces in the in goal. It's all oh, very awkward. Bounce and the Warriors are going to score a try from nothing. Well, just rewind all that. This is a try of the century. <laughs> There's two kicks, plenty of offloads. And in the end, the second kick ends in the most perfect position with a brilliant bounce for the chasing team. Look at this kick. I don't know whether that was intentional, but we'll say it was just for the... The point of the exercise. It's a set play, Gus. Yeah. Surely. Oh, I liked it. And this kick was really good. Left footer. Bounces in between winger and fullback. Sits on its point. And bounces straight in the path of the Warriors. Chases. That's good stuff. Uh, try of the century. Hey, Alana, down to you. Yeah, a little bit disjointed from both sides there. Uh, it didn't look like the Warriors had much going on that whole set. Their, their play, the balls were really slow. They didn't have too many people moving in motion. Uh, the first kick from Georgia Hale was... Dicey. I think it came off her knee, but at the end, the second kick, the Dragons line was a little bit disjointed, probably because they were wondering what was going on as well. Uh, but we didn't have a fullback back there. Um, it was one of the forwards that was back there, Annette Brander. So I think that could possibly why, be why the ball wasn't caught on the full. But for the, for the Warriors, this is a huge opportunity for them. They really need to start playing their game and get some more points off the board. Use this as a confidence boost. Yes, well, often one try can get you two or maybe three. There'll be some nervous dragons at the moment. We're back to 18-6.
the try converted by R.P. Nichols. And St. George Illawarra now lead 18 points to six. Huh? Let's see if the Dragons get nervous trying to protect this lead. We know there's so many quality internationals in this Warriors team. And Papa Lee, one of the champions of women's rugby league in New Zealand. 42-year-old, running it back there. And now it's Tamarua. Two power runs to start this set after points. Away to Hale. Now for Nichols up from fullback. Tessie Apps has got her along with Melanie Howard. Five short of the halfway line. To the left they come. And Georgia House, who loves to run the ball. And that, uh, oh, it's been steal, stolen by Sergis. It, it looked like a two person tackle. But the referee ruling the second defender dropped off. She's a smart young player, Jessica Sergis. I really like her. From what I know, she's only been playing for a couple of years. And what did Ruan say? It's her 21st birthday today? Yep. She's only young. McGregor, now to Hiramie. They've got a chance here. Hiramie with wonderful explosive pace. She can't score, surely. No. They've got it, but only just. It's a lot of work to get her down, and she did well with that fend, but she was too close to the sideline. Look at that. Oh. In and away off the right foot. Strong Fen gets rid of one, then she'll top these three on. Somewhere in all that, she offloaded too. There, there are two things that I'm really impressed with, with with the women's game that I've seen. I've seen it at the highest level here, but is how, how dedicated they are to the structure and shape with which they're playing. And the second thing is. It's just their physical willingness. They throw themselves into everything. There's absolutely no fear with them. No. Now Amber Carney. How and Naps combining in the tackle. There's time. There's certainly time. Tamarua. Goes for a charge up the centre. Hit by Wheeler. And hit Brander there as well. It's three tackles gone. Hale, oh no, Papali, he leaves it behind. Well, here's a chance for the Dragons to really put it to bed. Howard with a lovely dummy and then a step back towards the left-hand side. Anderson Pittman, the 20, the tackler for the Warriors. That's the 20 metre line. One more try and they're just about there. And Horn with that flashing speed, nearly cut through the line on the 10. It comes away to McGregor. She dummies to Wheeler, then runs behind her. And McGregor has uh, given herself up and had no option. Would have been a penalty otherwise. Stevens for Haran. Tackled by Papali'i. And Tamarua, three metres out from the line. Four plays gone on this set. Floating pass from Howard to Sergis. Jess Sergis up against the defence. Oh, she's a star. Jess Sergis, a brilliant try. Now, Jess was one of the Dragons hanging around before when the Warriors scored. And one of the three, I think, with the miscommunication, she looked like she was injured, a little bit lame there. But um, she's recovered well. She's similar to Isabel Kelly in that she's so physically apt that when you think you've got it, you don't. Look at that stretch out and push down on the line. Fantastic effort. Now she's strong in the hips and legs, and she moves so freely. Good change of direction, keeps the balance. Good strength, look at that. Pulls through tackles, reaches oh. out, great awareness. Brilliant stuff. Outstanding try, Alana. Happy 21st birthday, Jess Surges. What a birthday present that was to herself. She did very well. The defenders there that should have tackled her, but just her strength and determination to get over the line. What an athlete. Yes, the number three jumper for St. George Illawarra. Jess is wearing it now, and her partner, Zach, will be wearing it later on tonight as he lines up in the centres.
against South Sydney. That's rather extraordinary, isn't it? Now, this girl, she hasn't looked like missing anything. Oh, a bit of shape there. Brings it back. It looked a chance, but it's out to the right. to go on and win this one now. It's Georgia the Warrior having conceded a try to the Warriors just after uh, half time. They've cancelled that out with a great effort by Jess Sergis. And here comes Talisha Quinn with the carry back. Oh, rough tackle that one. Now Kate Haran. 25 short of the halfway through Melanie Howard. And now an inside ball from McGregor. And it comes away to Holly Wheeler, who has had it. a terrific game. That's a first mistake. Good to see Kate Harron out there. She's from up in far north Queensland in Innisfail. She's a school teacher and a single mum and has travelled hundreds, if not thousands, of kilometres just to play club footy in Brisbane for the Brisbane Panthers and got in with the Dragons and I think it's her debut tonight, actually. She'll be having a great time out there. Good to see. Dedication rewarded. And there she is, Kate Haran in 19. Down there making the tackle. Around the legs on Amber Carney. Now Tamarua tries to muscle the way towards the line. She's seven metres short of it. Anderson Pittman for Mario. Away now for Clark, who's dropped it. Well, nothing's going right for the Warriors. Got to disappoint their coach, Louisa Aviaki. Wonderful to see a former Kiwi fern, an absolute legend of the women's game, involved at coaching level. She'd be inspiring those girls and... Um, yeah, rare mistake that she probably would rather forget at this point in the game. Sometimes it's just not your day. A reminder as well about the semi-final the elimination stuff. The Rabbitohs and the Dragons coming up right here at ANZ on the most glorious of Sydney evenings. The ground, it's never looked better here at ANZ. And all the elements are there for a wonderful game of footy. We're with you. Live from 7 p.m. right here on 9. So we're under 10 minutes to go here. The Dragons 22, Warriors 6. Played by Quinn. Away to McGregor. And the one-handed ball underneath. The Warriors... Up there in defence, Rota and Papali'i, they make the tackle on Annette Brander. Inside. For Melanie Howard. It's a lovely kick. Rolling end over end back down near the 10 metre line. Picks up some good ground. And back comes Abby Nichols. Met by Sergis and Apps. Lisa Redwoods with it now. Moving short of the halfway line. Leia Tua, bustling up to the halfway line. Now Hale, now Papali'i. Leaks tackle made by Holly Wheeler. Laura Mariu playing out the back. Here's a chance, Clark down the flank, tries to step back inside, but they've got her. Kungai with a good tackle, covering across. Last play, picked up on the bounce by Mariu, sent to Papali'i. It's the last tackle. That's twice this half they've done that. Well, this young girl, Shakaya uh, Tungai, her effort there in defence was extraordinary. She raced up really quick to put pressure on the opposition. 
half missed the mark, but then got up off the ground, turned back and chased and made the tackle. Just her determination and athleticism was extraordinary. It's Annika Stevens, the dummy half, who was attended to by the trainer. Keziaps runs out to the 30 metre line. Here's Horn. What a prospect this young winger is. Cuts through them and up over the halfway line. Now Sergis sets off from dummy half. A couple of rising stars right there. Horn and Sergis in back to back efforts. Schwolga. They're making easy ground now. Yeah. I think the sting's gone right out of the Warriors girls. They're starting to paddle. They come down a short side and all McGregor on tackle number four. That's clever. Here we are. She replaces number 19, Jade Hayes. Serena Clark. Well, it's a it's a good result for the competition, really, because the Dragons winning here. It keeps the grand final uh, prospects alive for the Dragons. A, a Warriors win here, it would have meant uh, the Warriors had gone through and, and would play Brisbane in the grand final, and we've still got a round to go. So that other spot in the decider remains open going into next week. Up there, roll out to the side. Not on earth. No markets. Played by Tamarua. And a run here by Anderson Pittman has caught the defence offside. Is Cody Walker getting ready for what lies ahead? The Bunnies against the Dragons. Join us from 7 o'clock. The winner will go through and take on the Roosters in seven days' time for a place in the grand final. We've got... The Rabbitohs and Dragons, two legendary clubs tonight, and that'll be the case again next week. With the Roosters lying in wait. What do you think about the week off, Gus? It's, it's an advantage now, isn't it? Historically, it says that. It is, and particularly this season, because all the clubs only got the one buy. Most clubs have representation in the, in the rep round, and had a condensed origin period which puts more pressure on the origin players so it's been a longer harder season this year than usual so i think the week off will be welcome the problem is the roosters have lost the trell mitchell for the preliminary final and melbourne on the other hand get a lot of players back but they haven't played for a while he's hail playing with a short pass the way now to Nichols, who will play it within five metres of the line. That uh, probably should have been a penalty. The referee let it go. Hale spears one away. Chance here. Warriors are going to go over and score. And Bacani gets it over. Oh, no. We're going to come back. I think she dropped it. She dropped the ball with the line wide open. <laughs> she gave it a little bubble. There it is. There it is, Gus. Oh, a bubble. Oh, yeah. It's a drop. A big bubble. I don't even think that bubble did it. Must be frustrating for Georgia Hale. She's, I think she's had a great game as far as her passing and accuracy, but the timing in the pickup just hasn't gone their way today, the Warriors. Look at this girl. She's a beauty. Tungai with another great run. And on the back of that, Southwell. There's a face plant right into the dirt. That hurt. Tackle one. She fell very awkwardly. I hope her back's okay. I was worried about the face plan, but she sort of gets her arms pinned back and she can't protect herself as she goes down, see? Oh. And her arms yeah. caught. And it's a really awkward fall. South Walt bangs here. Her arms are pinned to her side and she hit the ground heavily with weight on top of her. I'm just watching the trainers out here. for the doctor. 
They've rolled her over onto her back, so they can't be overly concerned. She's moving everything, which is good. So they're just asking you some precautionary questions, and she seems good. That's good. Give her a drink. Give her an early night. Well, they're strapping her up. She's going to go around again. Yeah. That was really awkward. You know, it happens sometimes in the game today because the players are taught to to grab elbows and arms and lock them in, and sometimes you can feel like you're in a coffin. You've got no control over where you land. But she landed with two people on top of her there. And hey, Rowan. Yeah, just a quick one down here on the sideline while we've got a bit of an injury concern for Southwell. For the Dragons at the moment, they've got five players running at over 100 metres and the Warriors only have the two. So at the moment, they are really dominating in the run metres and they're dominating across the field. The defence that they've shown tonight has been so impressive. Unfortunately for the Warriors, on that last error on the goal line, we saw a lot of heads drop. So they're going to want to pick up for this next four minutes. Oh, look at Honey Hiramish, she's up near the double century mark. Now the Warriors have picked up a spilt ball and Smalley charges up to the 30 metre line. They've gone over the line, or largely over the line, on four occasions so far, the Warriors, and have been knocked back four times. It could be a lot closer on the board than it is at the moment. They just lacked a bit of polish there at the end. Here goes Mariu. Sending it out to Nickel, such an evasive customer. Serena Clark gets down and burrows away there. The referee is going to consult the bunker, however. They can't have, they can't have won another short. Sure. player of Serena Clark's experience. Wouldn't miss those opportunities. Let's see what the bunker says. She had plenty of defenders around her. She had a lot of work to do. You see the ball the there. Oh, I'm not so sure. He's ruled try. I don't think she's got, got there. Got there the first time. I think she's short, and now there's arms underneath her. He probably can't overrule the on-field decision. The I think she's come down short and then been lifted up off the ground. The on-field ruling is try. We're looking to We're determine, determine whether or not the Warriors player makes the line. So I'm sure there's a blade of white. With the live decision of try, we have insufficient evidence to determine whether she has made the ball to the line. We have a decision. So it will be a try. If it had been set up no try, they'd have... They'd have said no try too. Yeah. Well, I don't think it was a try. I don't think she got there. But it's on the scoreboard. Read it in the paper tomorrow. And it's academic, really. The Dragons have got this game parceled up. Low consolation for Serena Clark. Yeah, but for and against is important with the way the final is constructed. So. The Dragons will need to learn from that. That came from a really simple error. They can't afford to do that next week. You can't afford to do it any time, but up against other oppositions, um, that could cost them the game in the future. Alana. Yeah, I thought Racine McGregor did an excellent job to get her, her arm under there and hold her out. So I think they're a little bit unlucky, the Dragons, but that break just before it did the Warriors uh, some good. They got a little bit there, a little bit more breath back and a, a little bit more energy in that attack, attacking set. So they need to come out firing here to make a game of it. Just there. Second try of the game. And both of those have come after half time. But as I said before, they have had some opportunities that have really gone to waste. Full credit to the Dragons, though. It's been a, a clinical performance. They scored in the third minute and the, the seventh minute, opening up a 12 0 lead. And from there, chasing was going to be a difficult prospect for the Warriors as Nichols can't get that one over. 22 points to 10 as we the move towards full time. 30 minute halves, a reminder of the NRL Women's Premiership. So at the hour mark, we'll have full time here. 
I don't think I've ever seen ANZ Stadium look better than it does tonight. The surface is impeccable. Well, they've had beautiful weather. Just hold up, wait for it. It looks like a fast track tonight. We should see a, a bright, right? open game of football. A bit of breeze down there will keep the dew away. I don't want to steal Brad Fittler's thunder gust, but I know that they've cut the surface a bit lower than they normally would. Because the weather has been so good, they've been able to shave a bit extra grass off the top. So I think that will uh, promote an open game of footy. That's as close as I'm going to get to talking about ground conditions and dew points. I'm going to leave that to our mate down on the sideline. Here's Marty U. Up to the halfway. Tackled around the legs. It's a good tackle there by Stevens. Now Hale. Now for Nichols. Now for Papali'i. And now they spread right towards the left-hand side of the field. And Vanu is going to go over the touchline. Great stuff. And it's just Sergis again. Well, she's had an absolute blinder. Well, she's really competitive, isn't she? She doesn't like to lose at anything. The thing about Jess when she debuted for New South Wales, scored a lot of points. <laughs> and you look at that footage of when she did that, um, she pretty much had to catch the ball and run. She didn't have a lot of physical opposition from the Queensland defence. But you look at her out here tonight, she's put her body on the line, she's made decisions under pressure, and her defence, unbelievable. Hiramie now up against some of her New Zealand international counterparts. Laura Mardiu played a lot of international football. I think it was 17 years as a New Zealand women's representative. Amazing. Five World Cups. She hasn't missed one since they started. Yeah, phenomenal. They're trying to push South all over the sideline and a bit of a push and shove there with Serena Clark. Yeah, but again, it was Tungai who got in behind her and kept her in field for a teammate. <laughs> really selfless there, the young winger. He's had a tremendous game. And Schwolga, five short of the halfway line. Final 25 seconds of this. The Dragons are going to stay live in the competition. Well done to them. Branda hit hard by Leia Tour up on the halfway line. She's been rattled there. We're just checking on Annette Branda's welfare. She mightn't be in the best shape as she thought, actually. She's still down on her haunches, but the siren is ready to sound here. It's going to be a great result for the Dragons. So victory for St George Illawarra, 22 points to 10 over the Warriors. We've got elimination finals footy coming up shortly here on Nines Wide World of Sports.